Breaking news today out of the 2016 race for the White House, just two hours from now, number 13 will officially introduce himself as the newest Republican presidential candidate. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal is, yes, the 13th candidate to throw his hat into the ring on the Republican side. Next week, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie will reportedly do the same. All the while, other candidates you see on the screen have announced, and they are out there campaigning. In a recent poll, Jeb Bush leads the hopefuls in New Hampshire, but right behind him, Mr. Donald Trump. We're joined now by former Ronald Reagan political director and Republican strategist Ed Rollins and Democratic strategist Juan Williams, also host of the Five on Fox News. Okay, uh, you know, we look at all, everything these guys are talking about right now. And we're a business network. We care about people's money and how these guys are going to handle, and this woman, because, of course, Carly Fiorina's right. in there, how they're going to handle a global economy where a single headline out of a tiny country like Greece is going to smack these people and maybe America down. Who's the best prepared, Ed? Well, unfortunately, most candidates running for president of the United States are not well first in business or international business particularly. But I think the governors uh, who have a lot of trade missions and basically do a lot of things internationally uh, are a little better prepared than, than a senator who obviously just votes on certain things from time to time. So I would say the governors, and we've got several really capable governors in there. Uh, the person you got on the screen there, John Kasich, uh, was former chairman of the budget committee, mm -hmm. probably knows as much about the uh, federal budget, state budget as anybody. Uh, but I'd say one of those four or five governors would be very You say Rand Paul would be the worst. Uh, well, I think he, he's advocating a whole change in the tax system that's not particularly uh, accepted by most people. And then he wants a flat to... flat tax. A flat tax. And then he wants to abolish the, uh, the, the Federal Reserve, as did his father. That's pretty chaotic at this point in time. Juan, where, he's where's so, the... He's so polite. It's just chaotic. You chaotic. want to go with the Federal Reserve. Well, <laughs> yeah, you very know. nice of you, Ed. Yeah. Juan and I are very dear old friends. We, we go back to the Reagan White House when he was writing for the Washington Post. And, uh, oh, my God. And, and he was very young and very... very well, I don't know, Juan. Was it different back then? Did people have a comprehensive foreign policy to deal? We, we weren't as much a global economy back then. But now, again, we've got a tiny country like Greece, 11 million people with 180% debt to GDP. I doubt any of those candidates, or at least some of them, really have uh, their mind wrapped around what that means. And we could put up the list of other countries that are lining up behind Greece with terrible right. debt to GDP. I don't think they've dealt with this. And obviously, you look at the situation right now in terms of foreign policy overall, and you'd say that the Republican slate is lacking in foreign policy experience. Now, Republican voters say national security foreign policy is very important to them in this election. So it's going to be interesting to see who can emerge out of the Republican ranks. I was amazed when you said 13, by the way. I didn't realize it was 13. Oh, yeah. But I, well, more to come. I think more, our, more our to graphics come. have had to spill <laughs> over. I don't with know all how the you could deal with that number. But anyway, once you get them on the stage and start talking about Greece, start talking about the economy, start talking about global impact, world trade, we know the trade deal, for example. How do they react? I would imagine that a Rick Perry, done very well in Texas in terms of trade for that state. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that a Scott Walker, who made a trip over to, I think, London to try to show some foreign policy expertise, would try to rise up and say, you know, I have this capacity. But gosh, you look at people like Rand Paul, for example, and you'd say, you know, I don't think you're up to this. The interesting thing, Juan makes a very good point. Mm -hmm. for the, I've been around this business for 50 years, and, and, I, and this is one of the first times uh, that you're going to really have foreign policy front and center. And I think everyone's going to try and define leadership by their positions on foreign policy, strength of national defense, economic policy. And you're not going to get away with just talking about domestic policy, health care, what have you. So every single one of these candidates has to basically get up to speed. They'll have some very capable advisors. But traditionally, you don't learn about international politics, international economy, right. until after, either you're a business person or after you're yeah. president. And, and again, I'm not talking about that sort of puerile reporter no, no, question no, no. of who's the no, leader no. of Kazakhstan. I, I'm not interested in that. I am interested in the fact that, say, for example, Ted Cruz said the federal government has no business reordering the global economy. Well, guess what? <laughs> the global economy might reorder our markets yeah, if you yeah. ignore it and you're not up to speed on the issues in Europe, on what's going on in China. We we're just talking that, that Greece has debt to GDP of 180 percent. China's at 300 percent. They could be the next Greece. And then what are we going to do, Ed?
Well, the point you make is, is so very valid because anything they say in the campaign trail can obviously drive uh, the, the marketplace. The market is a very, I, I'm not an expert on it, but anything that, ha it seems the market jumps all over the place depending on what's said and where it's. Yeah, it's a headline driven. And, and headline market driven, right and it's, it, it's instant. So my sense is I've always tried to make candidates be very programmed. They don't like to be programmed. But what I would argue in this day and age of, of cell phones and everybody has a camera, here's your script, get, on the, get experts to tell you what you should be saying, make it your own positions, but be comfortable with it and consistent with it. Inconsistency, as you've just seen with Ted Cruz flipping on the trade policy, yeah. uh, what is he, for it or against it? I mean, that's, that's the... That's well, the, he was for it. Now, now he's against, against it. it. Uh, but I, mean, I don't you mean look to at the beat whole... up on Ted Cruz. No, but no, no, no it's not unfair, though, because still. you look at the whole lot and, you know, this whole notion of isolationism, mm -hmm. this whole notion of let's pull back from trade, let's pull back from the export-import bank, I find this very troubling. This is not, to my mind, I mean, Ed's the expert on the Republican side here, but this is not in keeping well, with Republican okay, things. Okay, so what's their plan to ring fence problems that come you up? Can't do you it. guys remember when Cypress banks were a, a total disaster? That began to affect people's 529s in Ohio. Okay, so, so we, can't, we can't ignore this, but Ed, I'm not hearing either of you guys bring up Donald Trump. Isn't he an international businessman? Donald Trump is an international businessman and knows a lot about a lot of things, and it's going to be more of a factor in this race than anybody wants to give him okay, credit for. Okay, that's a nice okay. way of putting it. Can he win? Is no, he going no, to take no, it to no, the no, distance? No, he's, he's, not, he's not going to take it to the distance, but he's certainly going to be, he's going to create chaos. He's going to talk to the blue-collar voter, and, and, and I was at his, his announcement because a friend of mine is involved in his campaign. Did, did, is and, your friend and, an actor who got paid? No, my friend, <laughs> my, my friend is a very t capable campaign strategist, mm -hmm. but the problem is that Donald had a very tight script went off for 50 minutes and said what he thinks. And he, he, he has some powerful thoughts. He knows a lot about a lot, but he's gonna, I'd hate to be on a stage sitting next to him because he's an entertainer and he basically uh, has done a lot of things. Yeah, but we have friends in South America and he's saying things about Mexicans no, raping and, people. And, 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 and so what happens is yikes. the party gets driven by the premise of the party. It, it gets driven by a lot of these people who say outrageous things. And he will go attempt to appeal to blue collar which obviously we need to pay attention to, but it's not basically as sophisticated as, we, as, as he may be. Juan, last word, how does Hillary Clinton play off all of this? Well, she has a tremendous advantage here having been Secretary of State, so she's going to say that she has foreign policy expertise. I think the weakness here, especially as we're talking business and talking Greece, is, it, is she, does she have any experience with economic issues? Exactly. Yes, she has a relationship to Wall Street having been this U.S. Senator from New York, and some fact on the Elizabeth Warren side of the ticket thinks she's too close to Wall Street. But does she really have global experience? Can she really come in here and talk about Greece? I don't think so, Liz. Well, while you guys were talking, the market came up about four points. So. We're very proud. We help. You should have us on. You should have us on every day. Five minutes every day, and we make millions for yeah, us. Really. Ed, you're always welcome back. Thank, Juan, thank you, Juan's going to stay with us you. for a few minutes. Juan Williams and Great. Ed Rollins, thank you.